Our lesson today is on rectangles, rhombuses, and squares, and we will start with definitions and then go right into the theorems. If I have a parallelogram with four congruent sides, that is a rhombus. Some of you are probably thinking that's a square, and sometimes it's a square, but a parallelogram with four congruent sides is always a rhombus. A parallelogram with four right angles is a rectangle. And a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles is a square. So what that means is that a square is both a rhombus and a rectangle, right? So if I got a parallelogram and it's a rhombus and it's a rectangle, then I know it's got to be a square. And square would be the most specific designation that I could give to that parallelogram. Okay, so let's see what these theorems tell us. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. Rhombus has perpendicular diagonals. So then that would mean a square has perpendicular diagonals too, right? Because all squares are rhombuses. Yes. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal is going to bisect a pair of opposite angles. So let's, let's just take a minute and draw a picture here. Might not be a great picture, but okay. Diagonals are perpendicular. So let me draw the diagonals in here. And if I had a good drawing, then these two diagonals would definitely be perpendicular. This is a rhombus. I should mark that all the sides are congruent. That's the definition of a rhombus. Okay, we also know that each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So that means this would be congruent to this, and this would be congruent to this. And wouldn't I therefore know that all four of those little angles are congruent to one another, right? Because the opposite angles, we know the rhombus is a parallelogram. And in a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are congruent. So therefore, if I took two congruent angles and I bisected both of them, then all four of these angles would have to be congruent to one another. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, is congruent to angle 3, is congruent to angle 4. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if you haven't started making flashcards yet for all these theorems and definitions, you really must do so because today is where things start to get jumbled up in your head, all these properties of these different quadrilaterals if you haven't memorized them. Okay, and finally, if a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. Rectangle has congruent diagonals. So a good question, maybe a good sometimes always never question would be, a rectangle has diagonals that are perpendicular. Would that be sometimes, always, or never? Think about it. This unit starting right now opens itself to many, many wonderful sometimes, always, never, and true-false questions. Okay, so let's do an example here. What are the measures of the numbered angles in rhombus PQRS? Well, the first thing I know is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. How do I know that? Because it's a rhombus, and that diagonal bisects the opposite angles. So I also know that each of those are congruent to angle 3 and angle 4. Okay, so how am I going to figure this out? Well, let's see. I know that angle QPS is supplementary to angle Q, right? So let's just use that to help us solve this problem. QPS. So the measure of angle QPS plus 104 equals 180, right? So the measure of angle QPS equals 180 minus 104, which is 76 degrees. 
But that's not the question. The question is what's the measure of angle 1, 2, 3, and 4? So each one of those angles is going to be half that, right? If the total, if the sum of the two angles there, the sum of 1 and 2 is 76, then I know that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2 equals half of 76, which is 38 degrees, which also equals the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4. All right, some conditions, more theorems. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, so these kind of seem like the converse of the theorems, of, theorems above. Let me check back up here. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Yeah, that's the converse of that up there. If one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Bisect. So this theorem tells me only one diagonal has to bisect a pair of opposite angles, because I know the other one's going to do that too. All right, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then I know I got a rectangle. And of course, I would also have a square, right? Wouldn't that be true of a square? Because all squares are rectangles? I believe so. Okay, and I put an exclamation point here so you'll remember. If a parallelogram is both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it has to be a square too. So let's see if we can use what we've just learned to identify these parallelograms. Can you conclude that the parallelogram is a rhombus, rectangle, or a square? Well, what have I got here? I've got a diagonal that's bisecting two pairs of opposite angles. That means it's a rhombus, because I just learned a theorem that told me that. What have I got here? I got perpendicular diagonals. That means I got a rhombus. I have congruent diagonals, which means I got a rectangle. And because of my little exclamation up there, I know that I also have a square, right? So the most precise name for this figure here is a square. Okay, for what value of x is the figure the given special parallelogram? What value of x would make this a rectangle? Oh, that's easy. I know this, I know this angle right here has to be a right angle. So 5x plus 2 plus 3x equals 90. 8x equals 88. So that value of x would have to be 11 to make that a rectangle. How about a rhombus? Hmm, what do I know? I got the diagonals, so I know those diagonals are bisecting these angles. So I know this one right here is also 3x plus 6. I know this one is also 8x plus 7. And I know that the those non-bisected angles are supplementary, right? So here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write 2 times 8x plus 7 plus 2 times 3x plus 6 equals 180. So 16x plus 14 plus 6x plus 12. 6x plus 12 equals 180. I may have to get my calculator for this. 16 plus 6 is 22. 22x equals 180 minus 26. So that is 1, 180 minus 26, 154. 154, I believe. Let me punch this into my calculator right here. 154 divided by 22 is 7. So for that thing there to be a rhombus, x has to be 7. Okay, rectangle, rectangle. Well, let's see. Oh, I got to remember that the diagonals are congruent, and not only that, because a rectangle is a parallelogram, they bisect each other. So those two parts of the diagonals are congruent, Therefore, I know that these two angles are congruent. How do I know that? By the base angles theorem. So I know that 4x minus 12 
equals 3x plus 4, so x is going to be 16. 16. So that would be 52. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, here we go. Here's some good sometimes, always, never. Hey, pause right here and try to answer these questions and come back and I'll tell you the truth. Okay, let's see what you got. A square is a rectangle. A square is always a rectangle. How about in reverse? A rectangle is a square. Well, sometimes a rectangle is a square, but you know, a square has congruent sides and a rectangle sometimes doesn't have congruent sides. Opposite sides are always congruent. And of course, the four angles are always right angles. So that's sometimes. A rhombus is a square. A rhombus is sometimes a square. A square is always a rhombus though, right? A square is always a rhombus, but a rhombus isn't always a square. How about this? A parallelogram is a rectangle. Sometimes, but sometimes it's not. It could be a rhombus that's not a rectangle. So a parallelogram doesn't always have to be a rectangle. The diagonals of a rhombus are congruent. Sometimes the diagonals of a rhombus would be congruent when the rhombus is a square, but a rhombus isn't always a square. Number six, the diagonals of a square are perpendicular. That would be always because the square is always a rhombus and the diagonals of every rhombus are perpendicular. Number seven, each diagonal of a rectangle bisects a pair of opposite angles. That would be sometimes because sometimes a rectangle is a rhombus. Right? If all the angles of the rhombus measure 90 degrees, or they're all right angles, then the rectangle is a rhombus. And in that case, in those cases, then the diagonals of that rectangle would bisect opposite angles. Okay, now I picked this proof out of the book, and I was just looking at it before I started to record this lesson. And unless there's a better way to do this that I'm not thinking of, it's very lengthy and it uses a lot of transitive property and proving triangles are congruent and corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So it really just turned out to be a mess of a proof that I frankly don't want to do right now. So I will put this on the board and you can look at it or we can talk about it in class, but I'm not going to add it to the recording time of this lesson. So that's it for the day. Be sure to make your flashcards with all these new theorems and definitions. Whew. Okay. I actually ended up doing this a little different way than I was thinking. I did not have to use congruent triangles. But I think what I'd like you to do is look through this. I don't want to talk through the whole thing right now. Just a whole lot of transitive property, using things I know about parallelograms and then relating that to angle congruence because of parallel lines. So look through this, see if it makes sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, then I will be happy to go over it in class with you. Keep making those flashcards and quizzing yourself on the theorems and definitions. See you next time.